All right, guys, I'm here with somebody here. I'm in Micro Center. And uh, you, want, you want to be on camera? Yeah, I'm fine with it. Okay, so so you, you love RetroPie, right? Well, yeah, no, I just found out about it online and just needed something to do. Um, all my emulators from my old um, PC crashed, so I figured right. I might as well try and learn something new and mm -hmm. might as well build a RetroPie. So uh, what did you see online? Um, well, because I know everything up until uh, like PS1 basically is right. okay, and um, but I was a big Nintendo fan, so oh, nice, I figured man. just do Legend of Zelda and uh -huh. <laughs> old fashioned. Okay, so uh, but which like whose videos and stuff do you watch to find out if it's possible or not? Oh no, Reddit. So I haven't even watched any videos. I'm starting completely from scratch, and right. yeah, 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 because it sucks because RetroPie doesn't work right now on the 4B. Oh, it doesn't? No, it doesn't. Oh, shit. oh well, well. Hey, at least building a small computer and trying something new. Yeah, that's true, man. Yeah, but you know, it will work in a few days. Well, why do you say a few days? <laughs> Go ahead. Huh? Go ahead. Because I work with the team. We, we oh, we ported it over. <laughs> yeah, we ported it over a few days ago. Oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, then this is God's way of telling me I'm supposed to be here right now or yeah, whoever Keo. anyone believes I'm Keo nice to meet you man Savion nice to meet you bro <laughs> nice to meet you man yeah so I'll show you some videos and stuff but nice to meet you man alright nice to meet you <laughs>Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is Keo Daikin, and today we are going to ice bathe our Raspberry Pi 4B. We're going to waterproof it, put it in ice, and overclock it to about 2 gigahertz, which is the maximum allowance you can get currently on the 4B. Now, I don't have a sufficient case or a fan, so this is the quickest and easiest method for me. If you guys uh, haven't watched any of my other waterproofing techniques or videos, you can please do so. I'll leave a link in the description, but I have an entire list or playlist of waterproofing electronics for a number of years now. Now, the purpose of this experiment is to see what temperatures we get after we ice cool it. As you guys all know, I will be running a version of the RetroPie build that is scheduled to release on the Raspberry Pi 4 here in a few days. So what we're going to do, uh, we know nominal temperatures are about 150 if you're using Raspberry and Buster, it's 170 degrees. So I want to see what temperatures we will get once we ice cool this and ice bathe it. Now, what I'm doing is I'm using a technique called polar bonding. Uh, this particular metal that I'm using, or actually uh, liquid that I'm using, is called Corrosion X. Uh, it's been used in the military. It's a military design specification. And it will bond to the metal. It doesn't cause any heat. In fact, it acts as an additional heat sink for all metals that put out heat. Uh, it's not silicone based, so it's not creating an additional coating or anything. So we're perfectly fine here. And it works good underwater too. So, uh, and it all works against salt water as well. Now, if you guys are planning on doing something like this, it is a great idea to go ahead and put some of the solution on the video display port output as you see there on the white connector and I'll also put some on the USB C uh, charging port because remember this stuff is going to be submerged under uh, water and in ice so uh, we don't want anything to get affected here we don't ha want to have any uh, accidents but with this stuff we're perfectly safe and uh, it repels all forms of liquid and uh, it doesn't bother it's not affected or anything by electricity now i have been asked a number of years uh, over a number of years is why do i do this i first started out waterproofing electronics and electronic speed controls with rc cars and shortly thereafter i noticed when uh, i started doing this i mentioned it to traxxas and castle and then eventually after that you know we started saying some waterproof electronics for our rc cars and stuff so I'm not trying to take any credit for that but uh, that's kind of how it went. <laughs> All right. Uh, but with this project, I have been asked for a number of years, why do I like to do this? And as a hobbyist, it's always good to know how to waterproof your electronics. I have a number of friends of mine who use these for uh, outdoor weather projects. They use the Raspberry Pis on swimming pools. Uh, some use them to track airplanes. They put this on the roofs of their house or their homes. So if you are using some type of water-based experiment or whatnot, this is one of the 
methods that I like to use. And again, I do not like using epoxy or anything else heavier because it will trap the heat inside and mess up your electronics. If you are using the other version of Corrosion X, which is the heavy duty, I would not suggest that. That is made for heavier metals like a doorknob or a basketball rim or something outside that's not uh, that stationary that doesn't you know put out any heat door locks outside hinges and things like that is fine but this is a very lightweight solution it actually uh, gives your electronics a little bit of a shine and uh, as i said earlier it does also give you a little bit of additional buffer as an additional heat sink so you're perfectly fine with that so uh, this has a number of uses and I also have friends who have a number of yachts who love to have electronics and things on their boats. So if you are uh, interested in further waterproofing or uh, giving your electronics longevity, I would suggest using a method like this because it will prevent uh, or protect against all of the elements, uh, seawater, dust, dirt, anything you guys are involved in. Uh, this will definitely help out. Now, I did mention to one of the representatives from RK1 of that and said, hey, maybe I'll waterproof my RK1 up machine. So uh, <laughs> we'll see if we'll get around to that if I have time for it, but it will be a cool experiment to do. Okay, guys, I finally got this working. I know exactly what it was. It was the video output script, but this is the same pie that I waterproofed. You can see the glossiness all over it. This is the one I'm normally working with. So what I'm gonna do now is pour some ice in here. Obviously because of the heat, we know it's gonna melt. I'm not gonna pour water in here for right now because I just want to use this as a temperature cooling test. Standard test on this or temperatures is about 40 degrees Celsius, uh, roughly 150 degrees Fahrenheit when uh, fully running. As you guys have seen in some of my other videos and postings on social media. So let's go ahead and get this set up and then we're gonna put some ice on it before it melts away. So let's go take a look. And you see I'm recording over here. Let's take a look at our temperature settings. And we're gonna overclock this to two gigahertz and then we're gonna see how some of these games truly run. So uh, right now it should be 40 degrees. Where are we? Oh, 55 degrees right now. Okay. So let's back out. Let me grab my ice. I just don't want this to fall off the table. All right. So now we will go ahead and overclock R. Now before we do that, let's see if the temperature is slowly dropping. <laughs> oh crap! <laughs> We're down to 26. All right, so let's go ahead and overclock this thing. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo, overclock script, and I wanna give a special shout out to you guys know who the, the guys are. Damaso, Pi Nation. Dirty Gaming, Regalai, level one. Uh, live temperature test, overclock. Yeah, baby, we're overclocking. Pi is now overclocked, it's gonna reset. If this catches on fire, whatever, who gives a crap? Nah, I won't do that. I'm just messing with you guys. All right, so, we're still recording. Still working. Trust me guys, it's fully waterproofed. Not water cool, but waterproof. Yeah, I'm still recording over there. Just waiting for this thing to boot up. Now remember, this is using Raspbian Lite, so it's a better version than Raspbian Buster. So it automatically runs a little bit cooler um, than its counterpart. So with this, I'm going to see how some of these other games truly run at full speed so you guys can see exactly what you can truly get. Now remember, as far as some of these games, uh, like Killer Instinct and NFL Blitz, um, that's still an emulation issue as opposed to just 
pure hardware. So, um, I know Dirty Gaming ran this yesterday. He had it clocked at 2 gigahertz. And he got uh, flawless frames per second and everything with um, uh, GoldenEye 007. So, I was just playing it a few seconds ago at 1750. So, we'll see exactly what we truly get. All right, we're recording. Still recording. Obviously, it's been fine up until this point, so let's kind of skip ahead. Now, obviously, since I only have one hand right now, I'm only going to just kind of walk around a little bit. And we'll look at the video entry screen. I think that'll give us an idea about how good this is running. Okay. Smooth, smooth, smooth. Looking smooth to me. All right, a little hiccup there. All right, let's walk across the bridge. Oh man, this is running really good. Now obviously, if you really want to do this on a full-time basis, you're going to need a fan. Okay, let me walk around the corner here. This is where it normally starts to get a little laggy, but now the frames per second everything is pretty good. There's no hiccups or lag anywhere. This is at two gigahertz. This is at the full power of the Raspberry Pi 4. No hiccups. Normally, nope, no hiccups. So if you guys have seen my demo videos, it hiccuped right about here. So it's freezing just a little bit. You know, rendering all that stuff in the background. So, all right, let me get out of here and let's see how, let's check our temps really quick. All right, so here we are back at our temperature screen after playing GoldenEye, and look, it got cooler. <laughs> We're at 12 degrees Fahrenheit. So, I'm sure you guys haven't seen that in many videos, right? After you overclock it and then it jumps, it goes down, right? All right, so let's see here. All right, let's see what we get. KI, full power, killer instinct, two gigahertz. I think it's still running a little slow. Yeah, still running a little slow. A little better performance. I know some of you probably aren't impressed, but... Okay, no, that's better. That screen right there, that Nintendo screen right there is loading a lot faster. Now, uh, someone suggested to me that I turn off the audio uh, in, the, in the program, because if you do that, supposedly that's what's giving this thing a hiccup or causing the lag. All right, it's running a little bit faster, I can tell. And definitely not good enough to really play it, but you can see a noticeable difference. Okay, so I think we've seen enough here. I'm trying to do some of these because I believe this might drop down to zero degrees and I'm not sure what the... Uh, okay, see, if you guys have seen the previous videos, you are seeing a little bit of improvement here. But um, I'm not sure what the operating temperature is off the top of my head with it being so cool, so. But hey, who's really complaining, right? I'm sure that ice around it is melting. All right, let's get out of here. Let's check out NFL Blitz. Now, I know a few other guys have ran the PS. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. Moving a little bit better. Nothing to really be impressed about, but I can tell a difference based upon the other videos and stuff that I've done, but still lagging. Still need some improvement. So, uh, again, this is running at 2 gigahertz. And 
performance is still lacking. So the only thing we could really hope for now, since we have it overclocked, would be uh, maybe adding additional RAM to uh, some of the VR RAM to maybe improve this, GL drivers, or maybe a better emulator to run this. I've tried several other emulators to run NFL Blitz, and right now MAME 2016 is one of the best because it emulates a lot of the other games that you normally couldn't run on the 3B+. I believe IRMS may run it too. Let me take a look really quick. It crashes, it crashes. So uh, there are a lot of new emulators you could download with this. Okay, that didn't work. So I will go ahead and delete this game when I'm done with it. I want to have a perfect set for you guys I could run. But a lot of the other games which you couldn't run will run better, of course. And last but not least, let's check out our temps one last time before we call it a day. And we are at 11 degrees Celsius. Congratulations, guys. We did it. So we're still fine. All right, guys. I am Keel Dyken. I am logging off. I'll catch you guys next time if you liked this video. Please consider subscribing or donating to my Patreon. And uh, we do video games and stuff over here. Tech. And a whole lot of other things. More or less, in general, just a big hobby channel for things I'm interested in. So guys, um, please subscribe or hit like if you like this video. Uh, I will be working on that Raspberry Pi 4 beta for you guys. Getting this out there is going to take me some time because I just want to make sure I check everything and see exactly what's up and up. But um, that does it for me guys and I will catch you guys later. You guys have a great day. Hey guys, real quick before I go, I decided to do a live temperature test so you can see some other accurate readouts of the Pi 4, still water cooled. Now, remind you, this is after it's fully been on for about a good 30 minutes or so, maybe almost close to an hour after I was doing some video recording and stuff and playing around with it. And as you can see, the temperatures are still holding somewhere between 13 and 15 degrees Celsius. So um, I did overclock this. Uh, it is still overclocked right now. And then I turned the overclock off and then I reran the test and I got eight degrees Celsius. So I just wanted to update you guys with that. Again, if you guys like this video, please consider subscribing and liking the video and also share it with your other social media content and other groups out there. Um, I will be doing some other tests and I will see you guys next time. Thank you.